Welcome. This is the GGC Quick Gaming News. Get your gaming news Monday through Friday, 12 p.m. Like, subscribe, hit the notification bells on all. Let's get it. Welcome gamers. I hope everyone had a great morning and a wonderful weekend. This is a new time slot that I would like to try. Hopefully it will get more views. And remember, if this is your first time here, please subscribe, hit the notification bells on all. If you like the video, please like the video. That helps the channel grow. And without further ado, let's get into some quick gaming news. And our first story, Star Wars fans take a 2002 game, make it VR, and it is amazing. It's called JKXR. It was created from Star Wars Jedi Knight 2, Jedi Outcast, which was released in 2002. JKXR was created by fans as a standalone VR port of the original, which means this is a complete reworking of Jedi Outcast engine with an all new download, although you'll still need a copy of the original for everything else. That explains why the team has been able to cater this so specifically to VR down to the new weapon and force powers. In the description, you'll be able to download it, but there's some restrictions. Check out the website for all the details. This game does look pretty damn fun. And staying with Star Wars news, Star Wars Battlefront 3 was actually very close to being finished, according to a developer. Michael Barclay, a lead designer at Naughty Dog and former Star Wars Battlefront 3 developer, the game was almost complete before getting canceled. Barclay stated that Star Wars Battlefront 3 was extremely close to being finished, and it was going to be incredible. I remember many years ago, gamers loving the Battlefront franchise. They loved all the vehicles and the experience they got playing as a stormtrooper and other characters in the game. And of course, when EA wants to reboot something and pays a large fee for a license, they have to be extremely aggressive with their monetization. That really rubbed gamers in a really bad way. And they really, really was very negative towards this game. But I think as the months and months passed and they changed some of the monetization and people really started liking these games. So there might be an actual future for our Star Wars Battlefront 3. I think gamers today are way more accustomed to all these microtransactions that are in their games today. X Defiant, a Ubisoft free to play first person shooter, which is a mix of Call of Duty, Fantasy, and sci-fi gaming. It's a very fast Twitch-like arena shooter. Right now, it's in its closed beta phase, which started on April 13th. When the game is released, you can expect a live service model to release content to gamers every three months. And every three months, it'll be new factions, new maps, new weapons, new battle pass, new cosmetics and bundles, and new events every three months. I've seen some gameplay. When I tell you the game is fast, it's very fast. It reminds me of old school Call of Duty. Yeah, very twitchy, very fast, and expect some lag. Also, you can expect some perks, like some champion type of gameplay where you could turn your character invisible, you could get a big shield with a big shotgun or a grenade launcher. There's some crazy things that are actually going on in this game. The game definitely looks very arcade and very fun. Horizon Forbidden West is getting some DLC. I know you're probably interested. I hope you have almost 17 gigabytes to download. The release date for the Burning Shores DLC is April 19th. It's gonna cost you about $20. There's some pre-order bonuses like an outfit and a new bow. The Burning Shores DLC contains additional content for Horizon Forbidden West, which includes new storylines, characters, and experiences. You must travel beyond the Forbidden West as Aloy's story continues. To enter the Burning Shores, you must complete the main quest up to and including Singularity in the PlayStation 5 version of Forbidden West. Follow the main quest, the players will receive a call over Aloy's focus beginning the DLC. Remember last month when The Last of Us released on the PC, it released with a ton of bugs and a ton of issues? Well, they got an update that's pretty sizable. The Last of Us Part 1 PC update 1.0.30 fixes audio, UI, and visual bugs. I'm looking at this list and there's no way that I'm going to list half the stuff that they've fixed, but a link to the whole list is in the descriptions. I can't wait until they get this game the way it's supposed to be because I know by then the price will go down and that's when I'm going to pounce on it. 
Can you trust Steam's review section? Well, maybe if you do, you might not after reading this story. The link is in the description. Over 2,500 team users have apparently had their accounts restricted over a single negative game review. According to a recent post on Slashdot, a tech forum site, the post details that the 2,439 users who marked the review as helpful, as well as those who gave it a total of 437 rewards, all have their accounts restricted. The game in question is Warlander. It's a fantasy themed online multiplayer MOBA. There's a shady anti-cheat system and it's alluding to possible data collection and intrusive software. The original review, which is getting a lot of attention, was taken down. And while a screenshot is available of the post itself, the review section has been hidden, likely a result of the ban. Apparently, the review was up about to three months before Steam Moderator took it down. Following this, all users who marked the review as helpful or gave a reward had their accounts restricted, preventing them from upvoting or downvoting any Steam review for 30 days. When users tried to contact Steam regarding the issue, they got a default response and were unable to get the vote ban lifted or shortened. That's some really shady stuff. While there's other reviews criticizing the game's anti-cheat, the one post that got the most upvotes is still hidden. It's deleted, it's gone. So now you have to ask, is the review sections on Steam, are they really effective? All right, gamers, that's going to do it for me. That's all the quick stories that I found rather interesting over the weekend. Let me ask you guys something. Do you guys like the new changes? The new changes were a brand new intro. We're trying to speed things up a little bit. I don't want these stories to be more than a minute. And if they are, maybe a little bit more than a minute. Trying to make it much more quicker for everyone to get their gaming news and the new time. This is your boy, Geddon. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell on all and be back tomorrow for more quick gaming news. We out of here.